Assalamualaikum students and welcome to uh, lecture 24 of uh, this fluid mechanics 2 course and here we are going to talk about the net positive uh, suction head uh, known as the NBSH. So uh, before doing that you know that we are talking about centrifugal pumps and uh, so far we have talked about the powers and the efficiencies and we saw graph uh, on which the overall head of the pump was plotted against the uh, flow rate and we saw that how the efficiency curves can fit in right there and for a uh, identified flow rate we can find the head and the efficiency of uh, our pump from the graph uh, that is normally provided by the manufacturer of the centrifugal pump but now let's talk about a problem that we encounter in our pumps and that problem is cavitation And so far, uh, as you know, we define cavitation that uh, where the uh, inside a pipe, the uh, vapor pressure, the pressure inside the pipe goes below the vapor pressure if you are dealing with water, uh, of water. So the pressure inside the pipe when it goes below the vapor pressure of the water, then the bubbles start to uh, appear. And when those bubbles pass through the impeller, uh, they strike against the impeller. And so we have a mixture mixture of liquid and air that passes through the impeller and air in the form of bubbles so when this mixture passes through your impeller it causes significant amount of damage uh, basically the bubbles have air inside and when those bubbles uh, start uh, bursting uh, uh, right on top of this blade uh, the air strikes against uh, this impeller and these are actually just small shock waves that the impeller is experiencing so this is how the impeller gets damaged this is how the friction losses uh, they shoot up and this is how your uh, pump start to lose its efficiency so uh, this is how we are going to use our nut a uh, positive section head term and we are going to define that what will be the uh, height between the free surface and the suction side of the pump and what could be that maximum height uh, at which we can avoid cavitation so this is our scenario right here we have our reservoir that you can see is filled with water and uh, that reservoir uh, from this reservoir water is pumped through this centrifugal pump centrifugal pump so this right here is the suction side this is the suction side this point two and on point one we have the free surface of this reservoir so this right here is the elevation that we are interested in this is the elevation from point one to point two that you can call uh, z minus that one so this is delta z basically so mm, now uh, what we are going to do we are going to define this delta z that how much uh, can this uh, delta z be so that we can avoid cavitation at this point right here this is the entry point of this centrifugal pump uh, the suction side so to identify it we will have two pressures one will be the p at the atmosphere and the other will be the uh, p at the suction side so the p at the suction side should not go below the vapor pressure of this water if this happens then we will have cavitation so this is what we do not want and this is controlled by this height this is controlled by this height this whole scenario is controlled by this height that how much should that high be uh, so that we can avoid cavitation if i let's suppose that one is let's say let's say for example 10 or let's say 50 feet so if i go above 50 feet will cavitation occur this is what our net positive suction head term will tell us so let's see some formulas for this term and then elaborate that how we are going to find our delta z from those formulas 
and how we can use it to find our net positive suction head and from that our minimum uh, delta z or z1 uh, which can be used between this free surface and the suction side of the impeller to avoid cavitation so this is uh, what our net positive suction head pressure uh, suction head will be sorry it's not pressure this is net positive suction head so this is again in terms of uh, the um, two pressures that are involved one is the pressure at the suction side so that is the uh, pressure at the suction side the pressure head basically the pressure head at the suction side then there is the velocity head at the suction uh, side this right here and then we have the vapor pressure so uh, this uh, pressure must be uh, greater than this one so that we can avoid cavitation so we have these two uh, pressure heads pressure head and velocity head at the suction side and then we have the uh, vapor pressure head so this is the vapor pressure head So this should less this should be less than these two guys right over here so that we can avoid cavitation but uh, now let's write some equations and use our Renault transport theorem analysis for, for our energy equation that we derived previously in fluid mechanics one course and i gave you two lectures for you to revise so that now you can uh, see the terms and you understand them that what is going on we are basically going to apply our energy equation at point one and point two and then we are going to see that how we can mix these guys over there so before doing that let's read out what is written in this paragraph and this paragraph tells us that we have two types of uh, net positive head section heads one is np sh and subscript r the one that is required for us to avoid cavitation and the other is n p s h a the one that is available so available depends on the type of the system that we are going to use that uh, right now in this system there is a reservoir then there is a pipe section and then there is a pump so this uh, these three things comprises a system a whole system so what is the total uh, net positive head section head available in a system and what is required for a system what is required for a system that what will be required for that system so the one that is available and the one that is required so if the available is greater than the required then well and good if it is not then we are in trouble so this is what this paragraph tells us that we have actually two uh, types of net positive section heads one the available and the other the required so so now this will uh, how we will look like when the energy equation the energy equation applied between the free liquid surface where the pressure is atmospheric and a point on the section side of the pump near the impeller yields uh, this equation right here and you should comprehend this equation if you are uh, you have revised your uh, course lecture from the fm1 course uh, that we derived for comparing the energy equation and Bernoulli equations so now this is our uh, head uh, atmospheric pressure head this is the elevation z1 right here uh, this is our suction uh, pressure head this is our uh, velocity at the suction uh, velocity head at the suction side and this is these are the head losses the head losses since we have uh, read about the head losses in our pipe section and here you can see a pipe section so we are going to now include our head losses uh, inside the pumps because we now know that what those terms will be for the head losses and how we can put in the different values to actually get more uh, actual values for our particular problems now this is how this equation will pan out And then again where delta LH represents the head losses between the free surface and the pump impeller inlet this is again the pump pump impeller inlet so thus the head available at the pump impeller inlet is uh, 
equal to this this is the uh, total head this will be the uh, uh, total head that is available the pressure head the velocity head then we have the atmospheric uh, pressure at this point and the elevation z1 minus the uh, head losses so this right here will be known as the NPSHA. So we also had a previous equation so by combining it with that we will get this equation 12.25 and this equation will be uh, used to find out the net positive suction head that is required for a particular system and if you know that we can find out our minimum uh, Z1 uh, for which uh, which is required to avoid cavitation and this is our vapor pressure and atmospheric pressure so the head losses and we combine these terms to get our that positive section head for this calculation uh, absolute pressures are normally used so the pressure terms that you see in this uh, equation we will use absolute pressure since vapor pressure is usually specified as an absolute pressure so for proper pump operation the available uh, net positive section head should be greater than or equal to the required so this is what we already established so this is how you will avoid cavitation now this is the curve that we previously saw and uh, we saw performance curve for a particular uh, centrifugal pump with a particular omega and the particular radius of the impeller uh, or sorry the diameter of the impeller now here on this graph you can see the performance curve for an 8 inch dia impeller for a 7 inch diameter impeller for a 6 inch diameter impeller these are the performance curves of uh, these three types of uh, impellers based on their uh, diameter of the impeller and then we have these efficiency curve the 50 percent uh, 55 percent 60 63 65 uh, 63 60 55 uh, and 50 so uh, these are the efficiency curves now we have another curve that, that is our net positive section head that is required so if we uh, uh, somehow uh, plot an equation in which we can uh, see the relation between the available head uh, and the uh, Q so we can put in different values of Q and then we can find uh, uh, a curve which will cross all of them right like this and from that we can see for our 6 inch diameter impeller we will have this point for our 7 inch diameter impeller we will have this point and for 8 inch impeller diameter we will have this point so these points will correspond to a particular value of q and from here we can uh, point out our particular amounts of head like this these are of course for different diameter impellers and by doing so uh, we can actually uh, see that what the efficiency is so right now at least you can now see that we are near the 55 percent line so here we can see that this is just below 55 so you can say for this point we have efficiency of uh, 54 percent let's say uh, here this line is more near to the 63 percent so just below that you can say that it is 61 percent right here and here you can see that it is uh, above 65 just above 65 so you can write it as 66 percent so just by uh, finding a relation between a head uh, available head and q uh, if we have an equation uh, for these two terms we can draw a curve on this plot and then we can read out the efficiencies uh, the heads and the flow rates and uh, uh, basically also the horsepower the shaft horsepower you can see the dotted lines right here the brake horsepower bhp these are the dotted lines for the shaft horsepower that will be available in this particular case and we can also uh, see their values too so from the performance curve we can actually uh, see all this data and actually also write it for a particular case this is what we are going to do in this next section so now we are going to talk about the system characteristics and how we are going to select our pump 
so this is very critical and we will have a flow situation for this to actually make sense of all this so here we have two reservoirs uh, and in between these two reservoirs there is a pump and a valve uh, as you can see so uh, from this reservoir the water will be pumped into the uh, the one uh, at the high reservoir now this is where our in energy equation will comes into play we will apply energy equation at this point and we will apply our energy equation at this point so uh, pressure will be atmospheric at both these points uh, velocities will be there to neglect just like the pressures so what we will be left with we will be left with is that one we will be left with that two and uh, then our at losses that we encounter when this liquid flow through this um this wall and this pipe section and the total available head that we will uh, have from this system so this is what we will be left with we will be left with the elevation the elevation delta z and the head losses these losses can be major or minor and we know our uh, terms for the major and minor losses we will just put them there and we will input the value and then we will find our actual head that will be uh, available from the system so h a uh, it can be and the head available can be written in as this now this is what we already described so we will move on uh, so now here they are putting the delta h l as k q square uh, so this is basically again uh, k actually represents the all the friction losses all the friction losses this is what k represents and this is also uh, proportional to the square of the flow rate so h l is uh, proportional to square of the flow rates and to neglect this proportionality we will put inequality and multiply it, it with k and k represents all the friction losses so this is a simple term to put in here and this is how our equation will look like now and where k depends on the pipe size length friction factors minor losses coefficients that is all we know uh, equation 12.7 which is shown in the figure in the margin is the system equation this is a system equation this is the equation of this system this equation is for this system only equation of the system equation of this system so now you can see how amazing this is that we have a system we have two reservoirs we have a pump we have a wall but we can put it in form of h z k and q this is how fascinating science can be so now let's so this is what we did uh, we said earlier that uh, we require uh, an equation between the uh, head of the pump the actual head of the pump and the flow rate so that we, we can plot a line uh, on this graph uh, in which normally we have a pump performance curve that is a curve for a particular pump uh, and that pump was not installed in a particular system so this is a pump performance curve that is a pump uh, that was uh, tested by the manufacturer uh, at his facility so that pump was yet not installed on this site uh, but on the site we then decided to do this uh, we decided to install this pump between these two reservoirs and then what we did uh, by uh, using our energy uh, equation for this particular scenario we derived a equation for the head of the pump and the uh, between the flow rate we sign equation for the head of the pump in terms of the flow rate and the elevation between this uh, these two reservoirs so now this equation is for the system this is the system equation and that equation is given in terms of delta z uh, the friction losses decay and the flow rate q square so this is the system equation and when we uh, know our uh, height delta z uh, for, for this system we can also find our k uh, the friction losses uh, and then we can uh, use different values of uh, flow rates and we can actually plot a line like this the blue dotted line that you see right here this one you can actually draw a line like this and this line will uh, cut this 
pump performance curve which is for a particular pump uh, the pump that is used in this system this pump right here uh, this pump has a performance curve and when the system curve uh, intersects this at a particular pump, uh, point uh, then that is our operating point our uh, operating uh, flow rate uh, condition at which our pump should operate the flow rate at which our pump should operate it will also gives us the actual head the actual head for our uh, particular system and by moving this line just above we can actually get our efficiency for this particular system with this pump so we can also see our efficiency so this is how um, by using the performance curve and by uh, writing an energy equation for our system we can actually uh, see the different values that is our available head the q the efficiency if we have a further information we can also find the shaft uh, power available uh, we can also find the that will be the brake horse power that is the work that is in or the power that is in we can also find the power that is out the water horse power that we called the water horse power that is our outlet by uh, we can also find these values as well so this is uh, a lot of information with which you can select a proper pump so this is all what you need to know and this is all that is uh, it so this was uh, regarding our uh, pump selection then we have as you know uh, you already did this uh, we have a uh, and you also might saw that equation and but and you also uh, i guess put them in your assignments but at that time you didn't knew that what was happening actually so now we have a system curve we have a system curve for both the parallel uh, the series type pumps and the uh, parallel type pumps so you have the system uh, curve and now you know that where this system curve came from this came from an equation for a particular system uh, and you draw this curve on this uh, chart on which a pump performance curve for two pumps was given and a pump performance curve for one curve was also given and you then saw two intersecting points one for one pump so you saw the flow rates and the heads available and if you had another line like efficiency you can also find that and then so on and so forth and also for the two pumps so here you can see that with pumps in series uh, the head uh, overall head uh, is available that is uh, increased and the flow rate uh, is on this axis so you can actually find all these values for uh, pumps in series and then you say you see for pumps in parallel for a particular head the flow rate increases uh, and then you can see the system curve and the two pumps performance curve and the one pump performance curve so this is uh, these are for the pumps in series or in parallel uh, the performance curve so now you can clearly see both for the series and parallel case now let's see an example for our net positive suction head and in this example we are given a centrifugal pump and let's see the figure also this is the figure that we just used and in this figure uh, now let's put in some values and find the net positive suction head uh, so at this flow rate the required net positive suction head is 15 feet so this is the head that is the required and it is 15 feet it is given uh, as specified by pump manufacturer so this is an information that is given by the pump manufacturer so actually the manufacturer will uh, tell you about this then you will find your z to uh, actually put this pump in a, at an appropriate height from the free surface of the water so that cavitation will not be caused so this is what this example is all about so the water temperature is 80 Fahrenheit and atmospheric pressure is uh, this much 14.7 pound per square inch assume the major head loss is between the tanks and the pump inlet is due to the filter at the pipe and inlet having minor losses coefficient this much so here at some filter is installed and there the minor losses are this much other losses can be neglected the pipe on the suction side of the pump has a diameter 4 inches so on the suction side the pipe diameter is 4 inches so what we are going to do determine the height z1 that the pump can be located above the water surface without cavitation 
so now you can have an idea uh, that what you are talking about if you were required to place a valve in the flow path so would you place it upstream or downstream of this pump so if you need to place a valve somewhere in this system so will you play, place it upstream or downstream so this is we have to answer at the end so now let's apply the, our energy equation and let's write an equation for this system so by doing this that before that we need to have an equation for our bsha so we know that head we know our atmospheric pressure we know this value uh, we can find our vapor pressure for water from the table by using this temperature right here and the atmospheric pressure is already given and we can also have a term for our head losses in terms of flow rates i guess yes yes we can have that and the flow rate is also given so yes we can write this term in terms of our kn q squares i guess yes this is how it will be uh, and the maximum value of z1 will occur when the available is equal to the required net pressure section head uh, so this is how we will arrange our equation so z1 maximum will be that height uh, after which cavitation will occur we can have uh, our head losses in terms of this uh, because the minor head losses were given so we will just write the equation for our, our minor head losses okay uh, and then we have our uh, flow rate equation because we want our v square we don't want this v term in here so we will write that in terms of q over a so we know our uh, flow rate we can find our area because uh, the diameter of the uh, pump was also the uh, was given in terms of four inches and then we can find our velocity as well uh, then uh, we can also find our head losses uh, putting values in this equation uh, in this equation we can find our z1 to be uh, at a height of 7.65 feet so beyond this height cavitation will occur so this is the maximum height at which uh, a manufacturer specified n p s h a which is 15 feet n p s h a this is what the manufacturer specified that this is 15 inches so from from this information you actually calculated the height that is required beyond which cavitation will not uh, will occur so now you have your critical height so we had another uh, uh, argument that or where to place the uh, valve if you want to in the system upstream or downstream so if i add uh, a valve here uh, at the downstream so what will happen actually it will uh, add to this term it will add to this term right here that our kl will increase uh, our friction losses will increase so if that happens uh, it can actually affect this value it can go down and basically the chances chances of my cavitation can increase so this is uh, where i don't want this valve to be so my only option is at the downstream although it will increase the back pressure but uh, normally the pumps are uh, not uh, that much concerned about the back pressure at the um, downstream so our pump will still function well and this value will be safe so i will place the valve at the downstream of this particular pump okay this is what this is argued here so you can read it yourself uh, okay now uh, use uh, use of pump performance curve this is where our pump selection comes and uh, given is water is to be pumped from one large open tank to a second large open tank in this figure so let's see this figure water is pumped from one large tank into this another large tank the pipe diameter throughout is six inches and the total length of the pipe between the pipe entrance and the exit is 200 feet so overall the length of the pipe is 200 feet so this is the information that is written right here minor loss coefficient for entrance exit elbows are shown it is shown kl is equal to 1.5 and the friction factor for the pipe can be assumed constant and equal to 0.02 so the friction factor that is 
the Darcy friction factor if you remember a certain centrifugal pump having performance characteristics shown in this figure is suggested as a good pump for this, this flow system so actually they have given us a pump that this is a good pump for this system and we have a performance curve also because this is what the manufacturer give it, uh, gives you uh, the manufacturer will always give you a pump performance curve on which uh, you can actually plot a line for your system and then you can also find your uh, operating uh, cues, operating heads, uh, the efficiencies, the shaft horsepower, the water horsepower and all the available data that can be for your pump. So from this simple uh, graph right here, uh, we will, so what we will do, we will uh, write an equation for the system and then we will plot a line for this equation on this graph and then we will find our uh, optimum cues, our optimum heads, our efficiency and from that we will also calculate our uh, power that is uh, generated by the shaft of this pump or the uh, output uh, power that will be transferred to, uh, transferred to this uh, to the system that is water. So this is what this example is all about. And then uh, we will apply the energy equation on these two surfaces right here and we will get this these are our major losses these are our minor losses and on the pressure head velocity heads the elevation the available head so this is what we have at the outlet so we are not at the outlet but at the point two and this is for point one uh, at pressure at point one point two zero velocity at point one uh, point two zero uh, elevations at two minus at one ten feet is given uh, and uh, friction factor is given, diameter of the pipe is given, length of the pipe is given. So we can actually find our actual head. What we will have, we will only have our velocity v square uh, and we can actually replace it with uh, q over a. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to replace this with q over a. So we don't have the value of q, but we will get our velocities in terms of q square. So this is how our head available head equation will look like so now we have our available head equation in terms of the q square so we will put different values of q uh, values uh, 400 800 1200 1600 2000 in this equation and we will uh, plot points on this graph right here and we will have a line uh, for our uh, system our from our system equation our system curve and then we will see that uh, if let's suppose this system curve intersected this uh, pump performance curve at this point so we will have our operating q we will have our available head uh, we will have our efficiency and then from all this data we can from the shower we can find the shaft horsepower we can find the brake horse the uh, water horsepower and all the uh, data we can from this pump. So now uh, this is uh, equation in terms of gallons per minute when we uh, write an equation for Q in gallons per minute. So this is how that equation will look like. So we find uh, our Q um, for a particular uh, head we will find it to be uh, 1600 gallons uh, per minute. So with a corresponding head gain that is 65.5 feet. Now this is what uh, was this is the value that we find from this uh, system curve system curve this is a pump curve this is the efficiency so now i have this curve right here this curve right here which is my system curve that i find uh, by plotting uh, uh, head available head by putting in different values of q that i just did in the previous slide and i find out that this is the point where these two lines intersect the pump curve and the system curve and here the uh, flow rate can be right from this horizontal axis the available head can be uh, far, can be uh, can can be seen uh, from this uh, vertical and here it is mentioned right here we can actually see from this right here that this will be our efficiency for this 
particular system so this is what uh, we got uh, from the data that we had that now we know our efficiency the available head and the operating uh, flow rate uh, for this particular system by using this uh, data that we have we can actually find our shaft horsepower that i mentioned to you uh, before and this is uh, how much that shaft horsepower is for that particular pump so you can also uh, you can also find by using this efficiency formula you can also find your water horsepower because this right now is your brake horsepower which is at the inlet so this is the brake horsepower and efficiency is outlet over the inlet so by using the this these two terms you can also find your water horsepower so go on and do that so now you know everything about your pump uh, and your system and all the things that are available and this is all about the centrifugal pump